we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Father, some of us are living in slavery. May the yoke be broken today. Some of us have been restricted in our life. May that bar, may that barricade, May that obstruction of restriction be lifted today. Amen. Lord, we can't experience if after 2016 I remain the same. Today, the fourth day of a father representing April 2017, we can't pass through the same. We can't pass through this day and remain the same. There must be a remarkable change in the lives of your children. Father, may your breeze, your wind of fire blow into this house. Let the power of transformation take over this atmosphere. We release thousands of God's angels upon this environment. We besiege the atmosphere with the fire of the Holy Ghost. May that devil that is troubling your mind leave you alone today. May that spirit that is holding your mind captive set you loose today. May the fire of God most high pour upon your life today. Amen. Your life will never remain the same. Holy Spirit, address our hearts this moment. Let there be liberation in this house. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be seated. This morning, we want to, con uh, this afternoon, we want to continue from where we stopped in the morning time. And we talked about small but many, little but mighty. You are seeing it that in size, the thing is small, but it is great. And today, following the theme of this effort at 2016, we say that as far as your as far as your eyes can see, this evening I want to look at the subtopic which is see beyond the desert see beyond what beyond the desert can you tell your neighbor that neighbor, neighbor. Open, your eyes. open your eyes what do you see, what do you see? are you seeing a desert? desert see beyond the desert, see beyond the desert. turn to the other side where your other neighbor is tell the neighbor neighbor see beyond the desert This is what we want to consider this evening. See beyond the desert. We are talking about as far as your eyes can see. So long as your, the power of your vision can transport your sight to miles away. As far as the power of your vision can take you to, it belongs to you. As far as you can see, God told Abraham, as far as you can see, just look and you are going to possess wherever your eyes can possess. And by faith, Abraham looked with his spiritual eyes because his physical eyes were already weak. He looked with his spiritual eyes and he saw the whole world. And when Abraham saw the whole earth, God decided to give him the whole world. Can anybody tell me any place where children of men do not claim to be the children of Abraham? Is there any country? Even those who are not Christians, like the Muslim, they believe in Abraham more than some of us here. Let us look at the John we read in the morning. 
John 6, 11. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples. And the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise of the fishes as much as they would. Now, in this passage, we have an embarrassing situation here. In a congregation of about 5,000, not counting the women, not counting the children, Jesus wanted to feed the crowd. And what he had was just two fishes and five loaves of barley bread. Not even AJ bread, not even Agege bread. And Jesus saw beyond the sizes of these five loaves of bread. And he was able to lift up these loaves of bread and the two fishes. And he did what? And he was complaining to God. Is that what your Bible says? Jesus lifted them up. He looked up to his father in heaven who has the ability to provide and multiply what he has provided. And Jesus gave thanks. He looked beyond the five loaves of bread and he saw food from heaven. The power of God that could multiply these five loaves of bread and make remainders to remain. It did not just end there. The faith Jesus had did not die with Jesus. At first, he started with a small boy. Maybe the boy just took the loaves of bread and the two fishes. And then he went. Coincidentally, a need arose. And the place was dry. It was a dry land. Where there were only grasses, not trees, that produce fruits. Even if there had been trees, there was not enough food to feed these people. And when this small boy was approached, please, can you lend us this your five loaves and the two fishes? The boy gladly, gladly gave. He looked beyond the dryness of that environment. And he did what? And he kindly submitted those food items. And then, when Jesus received them, at first, it was a disciple who said, we have a small boy here with this loaf of bread and two fishes. Is that what your Bible says? Fine. And then, that disciple's faith did not die. He looked beyond the sizes of the food items and introduced them to Jesus. Jesus gave thanks in that situation. And then Jesus presented these items to who? To the disciples after lifting them to God. And he told the disciples, you take and distribute them. Now, this is embarrassing. This also looks like the miracle of turning water into wine. Jesus did not go there after telling them, go and feed the jars. They went there, feed them. They met him and said, Master, they are all fed. He said, okay, take some, serve, and give to the master of the occasion. It looks embarrassing. The water you just fetch yourself. Jesus did not go there to wave his hand. The general overseer did not jump up and down and sweat and scream and call Holy Ghost fire. He just said, you serve from that same water and do what? Give to the master of the occasion. Fetching water to fill the jars is not the challenge. It's not the challenge. After all, People in occasion, they do drink water too. But presenting the water to them was a challenge. Because what the people need that particular time was what? Was wine. As a matter of fact, some of them were already tispy. They were, some 
had already been getting drunk. We are already getting drunk. Because the master said, uh, it is the new wine. The best wine that's supposed to come first. And when people are drunk, you now present the old one. So, when we come face to face with situations like this, what do we need to do? If it had been me or you, Jesus gave five loaves of bread in that desert and two fishes and said, okay, you go into the crowd and share this for the 5,000 persons. What will be your reaction? I'll be a cat at. I want to share them. I'll be a magician. Jesus, multiply and first. Make a carry the plenty one go. Not before my hand. If he fail, look up. We ourselves, when it comes to spiritual things, we don't tend to apply our faith well. But if it is a money jobler, money jobler, they just put some notes into the water and they wash five, five foreign naira notes out. All dollars. So people said we start plating that. that. We may have people here who are putting money into MMM. Is that true? MMM, you want 30% increase. And when we do harvest, you see people who come and roll, there is no money, and your money is yielding 30% increase. Where is gold package? Where is mustard seed? Where is silver? Be wanting, wanting. Where are they? Eh? I'm not trying to give anybody BPL. We are in the house of God. But we should be wise. If you have faith that you give somebody 100 naira, and then within 30 days they give you 130 naira, why don't you use that type of, if you can have that type of faith, when it comes to money issue, why don't you use that faith in handling spiritual things? Is it wrong? Do you also remember a woman when there was drought, everywhere was dry, there was famine. Even farmlands looked like desert. Elijah met this woman and said, woman, can you give me a cup of water? And the woman said, okay, no problem. And he said, please, wait. As you bring the water, put little food. And the woman said, wait. Are you a stranger in Israel? Where is this one coming from? You said water. I said, okay, I will give you. You are talking about food? As a matter of fact, what we have now is the last meal in the house. I am gathering firewood in this desert so that I will go and prepare this food after eating with my son. Will I flat and wait for death? As a child of God, you have to look beyond the desert. Because the Lord says, For I know the plans I have toward who? Toward you. God has a plan. He will always have a plan for his children. If we can look beyond the desert, we will survive every and any situation that comes our way. Who controls dry season? Who controls rainy season? The same God. When Joseph was in Egypt, Pharaoh had a dream. And then you have cattle that came out of the night. Slim ones, seven. And then fat ones, how many? Seven. The slim ones swallowed the seven. And then they remained the same. God was speaking that 
the next few years, there will be plenty. And then the, the seven years, following the seven years of plenty, there will be what? There will be dryness. But God will always make provision for his children. Do we have people who are giving up in this country now? People who are giving up. It is easier to be poor and remain poor. It is better and it is good and better to be poor and become rich. Is that true? But do we know that it is unpleasant and unbearable to be rich and become poor and remain poor? Eh? If you are used to AC and then there is no more light again, no power, you can't even fuel your gen. When people are sleeping, when poor men are sleeping and snoring, you'll be cutting rats in the house. You'll be sweating. Because your system is not used to that poverty condition. At this time of economic recession, people may, a lot of people are already giving up. This is a time of desert in Nigeria. It is a time of dryness. And every one of us must look beyond this desert. So she your neighbor. Say neighbor. Yes. Look, beyond the look beyond the desert. We are talking about as far as your eyes can see. As far as you can see. And when they gave these loaves of bread and the two fishes of the disciples, they gladly with faith, they looked beyond the sizes of these items and they were distributing. As they gave to Maria, the thing will increase in the hand of Maria. They will cut again and give to Timothy. The thing will increase in the hand of Timothy couldn't finish his own. Maria couldn't finish his own. And they were passing the bread. Have you eaten? Is that enough for you? Can you take more? Do you want more fish? You, you were crying that time. Take, take. He said, no, I have enough. Can I give my own? He said, no, no, no. Look at my own. And do you know that if we have some type of persons who go to party, they will refuse to submit the remainder that feed the 12 baskets. Eh? We go to parties now, we see people. They never give me all. They never give me all one day under the share. And as they are receiving that one, they may even change seats and go to another side. And this person, where they are, get a go piece in a line and your bag did there before. Just aside, we cannot launch his book here. And then, you know this time now, you have to press calculator, everything you are doing. You press calculator. So he budgeted for drinks. Somebody went to him and asked him, Ah, doctor, did you do Zobo in this your occasion? He said, no, we didn't do Zobo. He said, I bet I'm seeing people going home with Zobo now. Cannot quickly rush and shed the, the people did not turn up. If you turn up, if you don't shop, finish. You go shake body now. Nah. If you shake body, not in four. So people, some people know who could come. If you never come, go drop your own. Oh, remind you. So he went to where the drinks can not wear. And then people, some persons open water. Eh? They couldn't drink the water. They turned the water down and poured the canned drinks inside the water as Zobo. I told him, I said, somebody is praying for you as we talk now. That may be somebody's meal in the evening. Is that true? But not do I more. 
Jesus, if it had been this time, so people will be saying, he never reached me, oh. He never reached me. In fact, when Peter and Shep pass here, they tell and say, oh God, as he don't old now, he don't look me. Meanwhile, he don't show belly full. He don't collect from people where they ran down. He don't keep on. Looking at the desert, the dryness at home. That when I get home, I will give these ones to my children today. Tomorrow, I will give this. But it doesn't work like that. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. It does not work like that. Ha! I remember the Israelites in the desert when God said, when you go and gather manna, gather for each day. Each day. And on Friday, gather the ones for two days. Some went on Friday, they gathered. And then on Saturday, the thing was still okay on Sabbath day. So they ate that one because you don't need to light firewood that day. is the day of Sabbath. You cannot go out. And then some people said, so this thing now, why not we pack it and make it many? Instead of going to the feed every day. So some people, they went and they gathered the manna, gather, gather. Ah, will you finish this or is it? Don't worry, mind your business. The following day, they saw maggots inside of it. It does not work like that. The Bible says, give us this day our what? Our daily. He said the troubles of each day are sufficient for that day. Every day has enough begin and trouble on its own. Don't bring to this own and add it to the one of tomorrow. Jesus said, tomorrow we worry about itself. Calm yourself down. Look beyond this desert you are seeing. Your God is bigger than the recession in Nigeria. We serve a big God. Let's look at our Bible. Genesis. Let's open to the, the main text. Genesis chapter 13. We read from verse 9. Look at Abraham talking here. Is not the whole land before thee? He was talking to Lot. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou would take left hand, then I will do what? Go to the right. Or if that will depart to the right, I will do what? Go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, and that it was watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zohar. Then Lot shows him all the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves, the one from the other. Praise the Lord. When it was time for Lot and Abraham to separate, Abraham, who was the uncle, so the nephew, the adopted son, and said, you look to the left or to the right. Which one will you choose? If you go to this side, I will go to this side. The land is precious enough. The man looks, and he saw the land so greenish, like the garden of the Lord. Do you know the garden of the Lord? Eh? Like Eden. The land was so beautiful. And he said, Abraham, uncle, <laughs> okay, you say either this side or this side there? He said, yes. Okay, uncle, I will take this side. I will take this side. He saw with his eyes. And the man was moved by what he saw. But 
Immediately he left. God had to intervene and told Abraham, Abraham, look. Look to the right. Look to the left. Look to your rear. Look to the front. As far as your eyes can see, I am going to give to you, including the land, the area Lord took. And when Abraham saw, he saw the whole land and God gave him a promise. But there was trouble. When the children of Israel were coming from the land of Egypt, some of them became discouraged. Some became so comfortable with the manna and the quail in the land of, in the desert. Some resolved to establish there. There was a time God said, you have stayed on this mountain for too long. Get up and move. It became a problem. Even when it was time to drive out the Canaanites, the Perizzites from the land. After driving some of them, they said, uh, the land is too much for us even. Let's forget about those people and remain here. Let's remain here. They looked for the best places of the land of Israel, the Palestinian land, and they dwelt there. As they remained there, they never knew that the places they were seen as dry land. Let me ask you one question. Can God give somebody a dry land for an inheritance? Eh? This is the problem. Just the way you answered no. Many of the children of Israel, they said the land is too dry. Why would God give us this type of dry land? Everywhere is rock, hill, rock. No. In fact, we like this place. Let's leave some enemies. Let them suffer ahead. Let them go and fight with stones and those dry places. They never knew that a time will come that they will see oil, crude oil inside the land. They were walking on the dry land. The desert, they never saw beyond the desert. There was oil. Crude oil under the dry land that God gave to them. So all the saw, Abraham saw. They looked, Abraham looked today. Israel is a very small mass of land. Even the small place that is remaining now. If not for God, they would have driven Israel. The people they left to live in the dry places of the land that God had given to them, those people have become their problem today. Is that true? Every time until Jesus will come, there will be a constant war between the sons of Ishmael and the true son of Abraham. Just imagine a situation if they had taken over the land when it was dry. Why do we fight war in Niger Delta in most cases? Some of us, they said this land, now swamp, sell land. And then somebody will come and buy the water, water, the swampy area and buy it. After some years, shell will come and see oil, crude oil inside. The one that sold it and traveled to Lagos will not come back. Now my papa land, oh. now my papa land, now your papa land. You never sell her. You never shop the money. We don't need to commonize things. When NTN and Glow came, some people were selling their land. And some said, we will not sell. Let us rent it for you. Is that true? Some sold their own and some rented the place. And there are places, these people, they will locate a better place where the network can be distributed. So once they locate your place, that this is the place, they will not leave you alone. 
Because they have a location where they must install their mass. Some we just said, now money, money, that come. Hey, hey, I pray, say, may God carry me go, my leg, carry me go where better day. Money don't come. They will collect the money and eat it once. In my village, a man sold the land to buy a canoe. One of my family members, he sold a land to buy canoe. Canoe? How will a man sell land to buy canoe? Honor a canoe that can capsize and you struggle for your life and leave the canoe alone. You must, in the time, the time of economic recession, you must see beyond your desert. There are things you must sell and there are things you must not sell. Like some of these goods, go and sell them. They will add no value to your life. They will even change the way you move. You don't move normal again. Number one, pride will enter your head. And then you change your step. And move like a big man. Then two, you begin to protect yourself. Somebody is coming close to you. Until you recognize the person well. You will not be comfortable because you wear good. For what? Sell it. Tell your neighbor, sell it now. <laughs> Don't go and sell your land when you have single. You must look beyond this period that we are and plan for your life instead of your children to drop out of school. Eh? Some of those girlfriends you have outside you are maintaining, cut them off. Blow, blow, boss, spoil it, go. Another day. Those ones, they are balloon. Those relationships, they are balloon. Once he boss, pop, is gone. All the money you pay, the money you give to girlfriend, they don't give you interest in it. If at the capital, you can't get it back. This period cuts your expenses down. Cut them. There are some things we spend money on that are not needed. For instance, you have your last born. And then you are buying baby things, buying baby things, buying baby things. Does it call for that? During economic recession. Within three months, that thing you have bought and children's things are so expensive. Is that true? That thing you have bought within three, four, five months is gone. And there is no body, no junior to use it again. If it's your firstborn, no problem. You can recycle it. Praise the Lord. It is time for us to look beyond our desert. And how must you survive this kind of season? Number one, you must rely on God and be sensitive to the things of the Spirit. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, following. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways, do what? Acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Decision you want to make, consult God first. And when you consult Him, He directs your path. You don't run into trouble anyhow. 
You don't run into losses anyhow. Even the business you are into, you, you may, may have been in the business for the past 20 years. There is still need to consult God. There is need. Let's look at a man who consulted God some time ago. Genesis chapter 26. Genesis 26. Are you there? 26, one following. And there was famine in the land. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham and Isaac. And Isaac went unto Abimelech king of the Philistine unto Gerah. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the what? Where there was? Where there was? Where there was famine. God said, Dwell in the land. And I shall tell you, I shall take thee off. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and we bless thee. For unto thee, and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath, which I swear unto Abraham, thy father. Look at verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in the land. Which land? The land struck by famine. Isaac sowed in the land, in that land, and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord did what? Bless him. The land was dry. There was no rain. Grasses were burning up. Everywhere was dry, and Isaac planted and Package his loads, his belongings, and said, I want to go down to Egypt. But God appeared to him and told him, Isaac, don't move. Stay in this land. Which land? This land. Where there is famine. Do what? Stay in this land. And Isaac stayed. And he was not begging. In that land that was dried, Isaac went and sowed in that same land. And the Bible says, and after Isaac sowed, he reaped a hundred fold. Hundred! Hundred. As if there was no famine. Our God, if God tells you, son, daughter, fetch water inside this bucket and cast your net. Do not doubt. Don't argue with God. Fetch water into the basin, into the bucket, and set your hook. In the morning after waking up, God will still surprise you. If God tells you that, look, oh, this man coming with Kekenape is the husband I have given to you. Don't argue. You can go and confirm it. But don't send the man test message that know your mate, I'm not your level. The worst you should do is that tell the man that wait, the heat you tell they come too much. May we pray first. Go pray at the pray. You as a man too, if God tells you that upon your degree, come and marry this illiterate. That is a desert. Is that not so? To you, don't argue with God. If God tells you that son, daughter, this time around, don't go and invest in MMM because it will collapse one day. Do not argue with God. Let me tell you my own experience. We were in uh, Adamibudu. Christian center. And then this gold package was everywhere. Gold package, gold package. All this package, package, package. And then I was in year two then. The year one, 
They had a meeting. They contributed money and poured the money into all these packages. But God revealed something to me that this thing will collapse. One morning, I told my mates, I told them, I said, there is something God revealed to me. Oh, let nobody put money into this gold package. God told me it will collapse. Do you know that? When the thing, God's K leg, I finally became crippled. Some people's BP shut up. I know one of them. The money, the wife was doing kerosene business. He went there and scraped the whole money. Went and borrowed 80,000 naira and put it inside and he was a student. With children, family. But we will see how people will come and tell God, God, why? Pastor, I am becoming to divine encounter. Is God a money doubler? I know there are people who will still live here and pop money. If there is any way you can withdraw your money, small, small, be withdrawing it. <laughs> Let me stop there. I don't want to give anybody high blood pressure. There was also a time. Praise the Lord. After the message, you can discuss it outside. Eh? There was also a time in Acts of Apostles chapter 8 verse 26 that the angel of the Lord appeared unto Philip and told Philip, Oh yeah, move now to the desert. Move to the desert. There is something you need to do there. And the man went. He went to Jerusalem, the desert unto Gaza. He went there, a dry land. And as a man got there, he saw the Ethiopian eunuch, the man who, to, where is Ethiopia in the map of the world? Where is Ethiopia? Is it in Europe? Where? The man who brought the gospel to you and I, if possible. The man who took the gospel of Jesus Christ to Africa. The man was riding on his chariot hurriedly and God woke a man of God up and said, get up, go to the desert. If God tell some of us to go to the desert. We will spend the next six hours agreeing with God. Until the Ethiopia eunuch will pass and go to Africa with his half knowledge. But this man quickly went there. He did not ask God that God, how will I come back? But do you know how the man came back? Eh? Immediately he baptized the Ethiopia eunuch. The spirit of God took him. Pam! And he vanished. Praise the Lord. Before we pray. Before we pray. In what way is the word of God ministering to you? Just the way our faces are different. So is God talking to our hearts differently. What desert is before you now that you need to look beyond? As you see me here now, do you see me as somebody that has a desert before me? Eh? I have. Oh. You may not have, and there is no need for you to look. Just be looking at heaven alone. Me, I have my own desert that every day I have to look beyond it. A songwriter says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I will live also. Look beyond your desert. Let's spend some time to pray. Look beyond the desert. Be on your feet. We have to pray. We serve the God that can ask a man 
to leave a new place and go and stay in the desert like John the Baptist. And the man did not have, John the Baptist did not have eczema on his skin. He did not have Korimakpa. He was in the desert. He did not have Kwashoko. God was feeding him in that desert. He was born in the town, but he lived in the desert. And Jesus said, among all persons born of woman, there is none greater than John the Baptist. Lift up your two hands before God. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the hearts of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want you to see this song with faith. If you see God, he will give you a direction today. Open, Open the, the eyes, eyes of, of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you highly lifted up. To see you highly lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour down your power and love as we sing. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. I want to see you. Do we know that we were sent into this world with an assignment from God? Can you look up to God with your eyes of faith? I want you to be in the spirit. The Bible says, he that is born of the spirit is spirit. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. If you are born of the spirit, I want you to look at your maker. Mirror your maker. Giving you an assignment. Reading from the scroll to you. That son. Daughter, I am sending you into the world to fulfill my will. Look at him. Look at him. Don't look at that desert. Don't look at that manito problem. Don't look at that sickness. Look at Jesus on the cross. Look at your maker on the throne with the scroll of your destiny. Reading and spelling every letter of it to you clearly. Can you look at him? Mirror your savior. You are not here for nothing. You are in this world for something. Your life is not a waste. Look at him. Tell him to open your eyes. You need to see the way God sees you. You need to have the understanding that God has about you. Keep those hands lifted up again. The wind of the Lord wants to pass through this house. And the house of men shall be touched. Veils of darkness shall be lifted now. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit of the Lord, breathe upon this once, once more, once more, as it was in the Garden of Eden. It is written that God breathed into the nursery of man, and man became a living soul. Breathe upon this once, once more. Once more, Father, let the wind of God's fire blow into your life. Let the refining fire of God blow 
into your life. The veil is broken. The veil is lifted. I said the veil is broken. That thing they use in covering your mind. So that you will not think well. That thing that has beclouded your dreams. You dream, even when God speaks to you, you don't hear. Even when God says, don't travel, you don't hear. Even when God says, remove this money from the house, keep it in the bank, you don't hear. May that veil be lifted in the name of Jesus. smoke bricks for me. Today, may the fire of the Lord consume that fire. In this month of April 2017 that today symbolizes you will not shed tears. May the spirit of God most high enter into this your destiny. If you are tired of living life, may the spirit of God quicken your mortal body. May the spirit of the Lord quicken your head. If your business is crumbling, may the anointing of the Lord fall upon your business. Anybody when they don't tie for COVID, when they put fire for the team, when they tell represent you for COVID, you're going to receive heat, they sweat anyhow for you. Father, in any way your children are enslaved, I send your angels into the four corners of the world, into the atmospheric world, into the terrestrial world, into the celestial world into all the heavenly bodies into the aquatic and marine world may the angels of the lord give you total freedom if there is anybody here you are happy people are coming to you you are happy and one of the coins you have given out was not used but kept somewhere and be used against you. Today, let there be a divine reverser. Amen. Let there be a divine reverser. Amen. Let there be a divine restoration. Amen. Receive your money back in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want you to pray this prayer. You will pray it and break those chains from your legs. Every chain that the devil has held you bound with. That the devil has held you bound with. Remove them from your legs. Remove them. Open your mouth and begin to pray. I break the chains with the blood of Jesus. I break them with the fire of the Holy Ghost. I consume them. You chains break. 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 Remember the word of the Lord. That if the Son of Man sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Somebody break the chains. Command the chains to break. Command the chains to break. Tell the devil you are not, you are not a slave. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, oh Lord, my Father, oh Lord. I speak into the month of April. I speak into the month of April. 2017. April, hear me well. April, hear me well. I must see you. I must see you. I must enter into you. I must enter into you. April, you will not see my absence. April, you will not see my absence. You will see my presence. You will see my presence. I will see your beginning. I will see your beginning. 
and I will see your end. I, you. I speak to you. You will pray. Every plan of the devil to cause trouble for me. In you I pray. I command them. Scatter by fire. Scatter by fire. Consume by fire. Consume by fire. I consume you by fire. In the name of Jesus. So, oh Lord, my Father, anywhere they bury my goodness, I travel there with your spirit. Oh, my goodness, I speak to you. You, my visa, you, my children, oh, my husband, oh, my wife, oh, my destiny, oh, my goodness. Oh my prosperity, I speak to you. Come out now. I approach you now. I approach you now. Somebody approach. Somebody approach. Somebody approach. Oh yeah, open your mouth and approach. Open your mouth and approach. In the name of Jesus, approach that particular destiny. Oh Lord, my Redeemer. Today is the day of the deliverance of your children. Round up your prayer. In Jesus' powerful name, we have prayed. Amen. Let me hear a belief in amen. Amen. Father, we'll give you worship. You remain God forever. Thank you for the deliverance you have given unto us. Lord, from today, we will see beyond our desert. When we are weak, when we are oppressed by the oppression in the world, and we fall asleep, let us hear your voice. Telling us, daughter, son, it is not over. In the name of Jesus. We believe the veil is lifted. The veil is on fire already. From this moment, when you sleep, you will see beyond your desert. Economy recession will not take your life. You will take the life of economic recession. 2016 will not see your end. You will see the end of 2016. Amen. Father, the enthronement of the president elect, Donald Trump, will not be a problem to the black race. Amen. It will not be a problem to Nigerians. Amen. For as many you have destined to travel to that United States of America, Lord, as they wake up in the morning and they enter their parlor, anytime they like, let it be so for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website, www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. God bless you.